You're watching the Wellness Hour, news that makes you healthier. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, reversing high blood pressure in just 30 days, naturally. Uh, with us, we have the author of 30 Days to Natural Blood Pressure Control, The No Pressure Solution, Dr. David DeRose. Dr. DeRose, welcome to the program. Great to be with you, Randy. So beginning, I guess, with blood pressure, how big of a problem is it? And how much should we be worried about it when we have high blood pressure? Randy, it's a huge problem. A billion people on our planet have high blood pressure. And the thing is, many of the people with dangerous blood pressure values don't even realize it. Okay, so, so like what are, what are symptoms other than putting that cuff on and looking at the numbers? High blood pressure, it's called the silent killer. Okay. Often there are no symptoms. So unless you're monitoring your blood pressure, unless you've had it checked, and unless you're not falsely reassured by guidelines that are based on treatment with medication, many, many people, in fact, the majority of Americans need to get their blood pressure lower. Okay, now with, with uh, blood pressure, um, how is it, I mean, who's doing, I guess every time you go to the doctor for a checkup, they do the blood pressure. Right, right. Are there a lot of people that are being misdiagnosed or overlooked or do your values in the book do you want their blood pressure lower than what I guess the standard is? We spend several chapters in the book dealing with this. It's, okay. it's, it's not just kind of a sound bite answer, but let me try to make it real simple. The problem is we've based our assessment of high blood pressure on where we need to kick in with medication therapy, okay? okay. And that figure is probably somewhere around 140 to 150 systolic for the average person over 90 diastolic. But the problem is the research indicates the lower you get your blood pressure down to probably about 110 systolic is where we need to be to keep the lowest risk of things like heart disease, stroke, kidney failure, blindness. And so what's happening is the doctor pats you on the back, hey, your blood pressure is 135 over 85. Well, yeah, it's better than the guy he just saw, or the guy I just saw. I see patients all the time, 170, okay. 180 over 100. But, but, but when I see, like, for example, when I mm -hmm. looked up my age knowing I'm going to interview right, you, right. I think it said like uh, 130 is the high number and 85 is a low number, I'd be okay, or 70, I think. But, but you don't the, like those numbers. I don't though. like those numbers okay. because that's not what the data shows. But the data shows if you start treating with medication a blood pressure of 130 over 80, you shouldn't be taking medicine. You see, so we're so medication oriented that we're telling people your blood pressure is fine because you don't need drugs. I'm saying, yeah, I don't, I'm not going to put you on drugs either, but you need to get serious about getting that blood pressure lower if you want to maintain cognitive function, if you want to maintain your vision as long as possible. But those drugs work, though. They, they do, do lower the blood go, pressure. They do. But what the research shows, we've got a beautiful graph in the book. You look at what happens. Once you get to about 130 systolic with medication, the average person starts having more problems, greater mortality, by ramping the medicines up to get the blood pressure lower. What are some of their side effects? Some of the side effects of common medication. Cough. Frequent urination. Low energy level. Depression. Sexual problems all from common blood pressure drugs. So I'm saying, no, we're not trying to get more people on medication. We're saying we all got to get serious as a country, as a world, about what we can do naturally to get our blood pressure down. So it's somebody that they're 150 over 90 or something. 30 days to natural blood, you're saying with nutrition. With nutrition, with proper exercise, with judicious use of supplements, avoiding things that adversely impact your blood pressure, you can get those numbers down. The average person can make dramatic strides. I've seen it over the years. Give me an example of some. I'll tell, tell you about uh, Ron, still a good friend of mine, went through a program I used to work with, an intensive lifestyle program. Ron basically, you know, numbers, you know, 180, 200 systolic within about a week on this kind of a program, like we feature in the No Pressure Solution, mm -hmm. 30 Days to Natural Blood Pressure, Ron's numbers are 120, 130. I just really? saw him recently. He's kept his weight off. He lost something like 100 pounds over the course, not just of a week, but over the course of some months following that. And he's still off all his blood pressure medications, running in the 120s. His story's in the book. Okay, so now when people die of sudden cardiac death, or they have stroke. Statistically, are these people usually have high blood pressure? High blood pressure is a major risk factor for both stroke and heart attack. So blood pressure and, and, and these medications. Now what happens if somebody goes to you? Because I know, look, we should mention, you wrote the book, you're, you said you don't really take on a lot of new patients. 
No, I, I've got because a you work very busy underserved. practice. Yeah, I'm working in an underserved population in Lake County, California. And, and you uh, lecture on this topic all I over lecture the all over the country, all over the world. We'll be in, in Eastern Europe in, in, a, in a month lecturing there in Vienna, Austria. I'll be there. So, I mean, people are interested in the topic worldwide. And, uh, in fact, there's a Czech edition of the book coming out. That's why we're going to be there in, in Prague. So, if I talk to a traditional mainstream, so-called mainstream medical doctor, they say, Randy, you can't, because I did, knowing you're coming on the thing. Because, yeah. Randy, you can't really lower blood pressure with just nutrition. They Have you ever heard that before, by the way? Um, I, haven't, I, haven't, I haven't heard it from someone who's read the book. Okay. And, I, and there's a lot of physicians, even on Amazon, I was just looking at you know, a review from a, a physician saying, hey, this stuff is, is right on, and I've already got a relative, their blood pressure's down to normal on this uh, regimen, so it works. But it's not just nutrition. I mean, we're looking at environment, we're looking at stress. I mean, it's a comprehensive program where we tackle blood pressure in 30 days. So who should read this book? Like, who's it designed for? Well, who's I mean, first, it best for? It, first of all, it's designed for the people who have high blood pressure. And the people that I've seen in my office, I remember one woman, Randy, some years ago, came in to me, first time. She'd already been to another doctor diagnosed with high blood pressure, six drugs. She'd been on one after the other, kept having side effects. And, she, and I mean, she felt fine. Remember, it's a silent disease. Okay. So she comes into my office, and we have the privilege of sharing this information with her. We didn't have the book out then. So now we can just put a book in someone's hand. They don't have to come to see me in a clinic that's already too busy. They can go to Amazon, get the book, and they can put these into practice themselves. Now, you, you know, some doctors, not like you say, you're working in an underserved community, taking insurance, things like that. You didn't have the luxury of being able to spend an hour, two hours, three hours with a patient. So this book... To, oftentimes you just say, read the book? That's right. It goes home with them. I just had a woman in the office just this week, and uh, she was saying, Dr. DeRose, I've read the whole book. In fact, uh, we, we had one person got real excited about one of the supplements we mentioned in the book and said, called, called my nurse, said, I'm dizzy. Um, that's a sign that the blood pressure is going down a lot. And, and just to kind of cut oh, right really? to the chase, it was coenzyme Q10. A All lot right. of research on that supplement. We have a whole chapter on different supplements that lower blood pressure. So I said, that's working. Back off the CoQ10. She shouldn't be taking that much. Now, medical doctors mm -hmm. in school, cardiologists in school, not a lot of training about CoQ10? Because I know it's now starting to pop up. Yeah, not a lot of training about it. Not when I was, now I, I, you know, I'm from, uh, I didn't just come out of medical school yesterday. Right. So, you know, hopefully they're integrating more of this uh, today. And I know there are people in conventional medical circles who are saying, we got to look at these things. They work. And uh, we have a study. We talked about coenzyme Q10. It's what we call a meta-analysis. We feature it in the book. And they've looked at multiple studies on coenzyme Q10, lowering blood pressure on average 10, 15 points systolic just really? with that one supplement. Men and women over 40, 50, I mean, who should take it? At what point should you take it? Well, well here's the deal. And uh, I've worked with lifestyle therapies, Randy, for years. And what I tell people is there is no supplement as powerful as lifestyle. I mean, honestly, we uh, don't have high uh, blood pressure because we're not, we don't have coenzyme Q10 in the water supply. I mean, that's not the solution, right? Uh, okay, right? Okay. It's because of our lifestyle. But these adjunctive things can help because some of us got dealt a bad hand in our genetics or early life history. We may want to talk about that at some point. T tell me this, for people watching this, if you could dummy this down your best way, mm -hmm. what is blood pressure? I mean, what, what's causing the height in blood pressure? Great question. First of all, what is it, okay? What is it? So your heart is beating roughly, if we make it simple, about once every second. That would be 60 beats per minute. That's it's a little on the lower end of the normal range. So if your heart is beating 60 beats per minute, that's once a second. Now, I often ask my audiences when I'm giving a lecture, I said, does your heart ever rest? And I get two answers. Some people say, no, no, no. And other people say, yes. And I say, you're both right. And the reason I can say that is the heart doesn't rest like for eight hours like you do at night. But what does it do? It rests for twice as long as it beats. So the heart will beat, if it's 60 beats a minute, one beat per second, the heart will beat for a third of a second, and then it will rest for two thirds of a second. Okay. When the heart beats, that surge of pressure that comes out, that's what we call the systolic pressure. That's the force that's propelling blood through the arteries, goes up to your brain, goes down through your hands, through your whole body system. As a surge of pressure generated by the heart, we call it systolic blood pressure. Then the heart rests for that two thirds of a second. And during that rest, the heart's gonna fall, the, the blood pressure in the blood vessels is gonna fall down to a lower level, that lowest level that it reaches before the heart pumps out again is what we call the diastolic blood pressure. So it's fluctuating the pressure in your arteries, in the tubes that are carrying your nutrients, your oxygen to yeah. your body. It's fluctuating between that high systolic number and the low diastolic number. So if you have high blood pressure, then what's happening? 
What's happening is the heart is generating more pressure than is optimal for your body. And I use the analogy, Randy, if I were to walk over you and hit you in your shoulder, what do you think? It would cause, cause permanent damage to you? No. So you're not impressed with my physique, huh? <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, now you're right. I probably would, couldn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But how about if I kept hitting you in the yeah, arm? Yeah, it's going to hurt. Exactly right. It's going to cause damage. And that's what high blood pressure is doing. It's pounding the organs. It's pounding the filtering. So you're wearing out your heart? It's at, wearing out the heart. That's right. Because you're, that blood pressure is being disseminated throughout the whole body. Your brain, your kidneys, your eyes, and your body cannot stand that pounding for 60 years. So you, how, how did you stumble onto this blood pressure thing as your passion? Well, it's one of my passions, and it, because the patients walking through internal medicine practices, okay, I have boards okay. in internal medicine and preventive medicine, and so the people that walk through our doors, they often have high blood pressure numbers, and my patients with diabetes, they often have but high blood pressure. How do you figure out that through nutrition alone that you can lower it? Well, remember, it's not nutrition alone. Okay, okay, it's and supplements. Yeah, and supplements, and lifestyle, and controlling stress. So it's a social right. support, huge thing. So we talk about all these areas. Really, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you the, the bottom line, Randy. I worked in conventional settings like other doctors. I've also worked in places where we work intensively, intensively with people. Okay. And when we work intensively with people in lifestyle centers, we find that you come into an environment of healing. Things happen quick. Blood pressure comes down. Blood sugar comes down. And that was what really got me so excited about the power of simple lifestyle changes. Okay, good. We're going to take a quick break. Uh, but final message. Somebody's watching this, okay? And they do what I did before you came here. Mm -hmm. I looked my age and what my blood pressure was supposed mm -hmm. to be. You're saying maybe the number should be like 10, 15 lower than what the so-called normal is. Mm -hmm. Is that what they do? That means... Well, really, it's it, it, you go, you get your blood pressure checked, and you should be how much less than what the value is? We're saying the research shows somewhere around 110 systolic is we have the lowest risk. It doesn't matter, no matter your, what age, your age. No matter what your oh, age so is. So 110 is a high number, and then the low number is what? In the, about 70. Yeah. What about your blood pressure? It's lower than that. Is it lower than all your friends? <laughs> well, I don't know about all my friends. We don't make them <laughs> take the, have their blood pressure checked when they come visit. All yeah. right, we're going to take a quick break. We'll come, we'll come right back. And by the way, how do they get your book? Amazon is the simplest place. And do they put in your name, Dr. DeRose? They can put DeRose, blood pressure, and it'll come right up. Okay, good. Yeah. You're watching the Wellness Hour. I'm Randy Alvarez. We'll be right back.